time tonight. You told me your back is killing you. Well, it is. Well, don't tell me. Tell your husband. He's the doctor. Oh, there's nothing I can do about it. It's natural. Well, now that's the trouble with having a husband who's a doctor. I mean, any other man would be worried and give you gobs of sympathy. Not Mark. He just says it's natural. <laughs> oh, well, honey, I'm afraid it's a little late to trade me in on a new one. Oh, I don't know. Ben, thanks again. The supper and the company were excellent. Well, it's the least that a about-to-be godfather could offer. Oh. You all right? Oh. I'm fine. If he can kick as hard on the outside as he does on the inside, he'll be the greatest soccer player in the world. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What's this uh, he business? Hmm? Oh, she knows it's a boy. Oh, go ahead. Make fun of me. But when Mark Jr. is born, you'll eat your words. All a woman has to do, Ben, is tie a penny to a string and hold it in front of her. If it swings this way, it's a girl. And if it swings this way, it's a boy. And it swung the boy way. Yeah. Very scientific. Well, if you men are so smart, do you know a better way to tell? Yes. Wait two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Doctors are no fun. Bye-bye, <laughs> Ben. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Right. <laughs> hey, all. Oh, how are you, Doc? Ruby? Oh. oh. Sorry I'm late, Paul, but... Had a new man on the freight dock. How's Ruthie? Oh, fine, just fine. Yeah? When's the baby due? Two weeks. What's so funny? I was just, just remembering what a labor pain you were. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now the truth. Do you want a boy or a girl? Honey, I told you the truth. I don't want it. Makes no difference. Well, it's going to be a boy. Uh, great. Would you feel awful now if it was a girl? Honey, I just want a baby, that's all. I love you. I was just out to your house. It's time. Annie's ready. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just take it easy. Uh, how, how much time between things? No time. They they just keep it coming. Uh, 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 honey, you drive home. I'll go with Eli. Uh, uh. All right, Papa, let's go. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good luck. Whoa.
felt by his mother and his father, O oh Lord. We pray that you will comfort them and guide them in the difficult time to follow. We give his soul unto you, O oh Lord, a, a soul that never knew the evils of this world. And we take heart in knowing that he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Some coffee? No. Must be getting late. What time is it? Pretty close to three o'clock. You could have seen the look on Mark's face. It'll take time, but they'll get over it. as worried about Ruth as I am about Mark. The look in his face was... He's a doctor. He had to go with Eli. There's nothing else he could do. I hope Mark believes that. How'd you get some sleep, huh? Good to see you. See you. Please, please, come in. Thank you. Well, I, uh, I thought I'd wait a couple of days before I came over. I was wondering if there was something you might need or something I could do. That's very kind of you, Ben, but we're fine. And please, sit down. Just made some coffee. How about a cup? I'm afraid it tastes like mud, though. Ruth is resting, and I'm just not much in the kitchen. No, I just won't have any. Thank you very much. I, 
How is Ruth? Fine. Much, much better. She felt bad about the things she said, but she was under such a strain. Of course. How are you feeling? All right. Ruth was my main concern, and uh, that seems to be working itself out, so that's all that really matters. It was just something that happened, nothing I could do about it, no way to second-guess nature. Just because a man's a doctor doesn't make him a fortune teller. Of course not. Well, I guess I'd better be getting back to work. Ben, uh, thanks for coming by. What? Say hello to Ruth. Just here, said to say hello. Asked if we needed anything. I told him we were fine. I have some house calls to make. You won't change your mind. I never said you had to stay in bed all day, but I did tell you that you needed rest. A lot more than you're getting. I know. I am tired. But there's so no much... No buts. No buts. Uh, you've got a very strong little baby sleeping out there, and he's going to need a strong mother. Now, what were you doing when I came here to see you? Come on, what were you doing? Scrubbing the floor. Oh. And what was the baby doing? He was sleeping. It just doesn't make any sense to pay a doctor if he won't do what he tells you. Now, when that baby sleeps, you sleep. That's an order. Yes, doctor. And if you're worried about germs, you've got a strong husband. Let him scrub the floors. Thank you, doctor. I'll drop by in a couple of days. Doctor? Yeah? I just wanted to say how sorry I am about what happened. Well, thank you, Annie. Go ahead, make fun of me. But when Mark Jr. is born, you'll eat your words. Honey, you drive home. I'll go with Eli. And we take heart in knowing that he will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Get away from my son! You killed him! Thank you. 
cry, Mark. Don't cry, my son. This week and next week. Don't rush me, Ben. This is a game of concentration. Only one move you could possibly make. Well, that's a pretty ridiculous statement to make with all these chess pieces still on the board. Sorry. One move, huh? Well, if you're so smart, what piece is it I'm supposed to move? Knight. <laughs> well, for your information, I knew that all the time. I was just feeling you out to see if you knew. Checkmate. You moved the wrong knight. Cleo! Eli, what's wrong? My baby. Somebody has taken my baby. I... No, it's very hard, Mrs. Johnson. I... I have to ask these questions. Did you see anyone around the place today? Any time, early in the morning, any time at all? No. No one. What about the doc? What time did he leave? I'm not sure. About four o'clock, I guess. Why would anyone want to steal my baby? We better let her get some rest. It doesn't make any sense, Ben. Can't be somebody after money. Eli doesn't have any money. No, that's for sure. Eli, do you know of anyone who has a grudge against you? Anyone who would want to hurt you? No, I... I spend most of my time in the fields. I, I don't have many friends, but I... I never hurt anybody. I never cheated anybody. Why would anybody want to take my baby? Eli, what time did you get back to the house? Before sundown. Six, six thirty. Then weren't we right over to Mark's place and Maybe he saw somebody. All right. You stay here with Annie. If we come up with anything, you'll hear about it right quick. Ben, Clem. All right, Mark, sorry about the late hour. Oh, the doctors are used to. What can I do for you? Someone has taken the Johnson baby. What? Yeah. Well, I don't believe it. I, I was just out there this afternoon. We know that, Mark. That's why we're here. Did you see anyone around the Johnson place today? No. Annie, of course, and Eli was out in the fields working. She and the baby were sleeping when I left. Why would anyone do a thing like that? We wish we knew. What about the road? Did you see anyone on the road going to or coming from the Johnson place? No, no, I didn't see a soul. Yeah, well, the only thing we can do is get together a posse. Mark, can you come along? I wish I could, Clem, but... Ruth is going through another bad period, and I'm afraid to leave her. Well, I can understand that, Mark. Good night, Mark. Thank you, Mark.
I didn't want to lie to them about your mother being here, Mark, but I was too ashamed to tell them that she'd left, that she'd abandoned her own child. I suppose we should feel sorry for her. She'll have to live with her guilt. Now, take your time. We've got to cover every inch of ground. Let's go. to thank you all for trying to help. No motives, no clues, nothing. I could get up another posse, but I wouldn't know where to start looking. There's nothing anybody could do except maybe pray that Whoever took the child doesn't do him any harm. Yeah. I'll notify the surrounding towns to keep a lookout. I think I'll stay in town at the hotel. I'm too tired to go back to the ranch. Ronnie. You look beat, Mr. Cartwright. I heard you didn't find a thing. No. Afraid not. I'm gonna need a room. Certainly. Room 26. It's at the back. You won't get all that street noise. Thank you. Ruth? Ruth? Uh, if Mark sent you to talk to me, Ben, it's no use. We've said all there is to say. I, I can't help the way I feel. Well, Mark didn't send me. I, I didn't even know you were here. Well, I won't be for long. I'm taking the 6 o'clock stage to San Francisco. Why? You certainly can't still be blaming Mark for what happened. I can, and I do. Ruth, you've got to give yourself a little more time. Look, it's all been said. And it's no good. It'll always be there. It'll always be between us. How did Mark take it when you left? Oh, he wasn't there. 
He was out making his afternoon rounds. He's a very good doctor, you know. Goodbye, Ben. Barney, when did Mrs. Sloan check in? Yesterday. Did you call what time? Uh, two in the afternoon. Why? Just wondering. Thank you, Barney. I thought you were going to get some sleep. Mr. Cartwright? something to do with the disappearance of the Johnson baby. What reason would he have to lie about Ruth being home last night when she was here in town at the hotel? Maybe he figured she'd change her mind and come back. Nobody'd know about it. Well, last night, he said he couldn't leave the house because he had to take care of Ruth. I stopped at his office on the way over here. At 2.30, he hadn't come in yet. So? So he must have some reason for not wanting to leave his house. Now, Clem, there's nothing else to go on. At least let's ride out there and have a talk with him. All right, Ben, all right. Let's go. to talk to you for a moment. Well, I can't talk now, Ben. Uh, Ruth isn't feeling well. Mark, I talked to Ruth in town a little while ago. You hear me, Mark? I heard you. Well, why don't you open up the door so we can talk? No, I know why you're here. She sent you here. She deserted her child, and now she wants him back. Well, it won't work. You can tell her that for me. Her child? Mark? Open the door so we can come in and talk to you for a minute. No. That child that you have with you in there, that isn't your child. Ruth lost her baby. That's a lie! <laughs> That's a stupid lie! You're all tr trying to take my son from me. Well, you won't. Now get away from here! I'm sorry, Mark, but if you don't open that door, I'm gonna have to break it open. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know I don't want to hurt anybody. But no one's gonna take my son from me. Put the gun away. He doesn't know what he's doing. We can't shoot in there anyway, there's a baby. What's happened to him, Ben? He's sick. He, 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 he won't hurt the child. Well, what are we going to do? The shape he's in, we'll never talk him out of there. Maybe his wife can. The stage doesn't leave till six. I'll get her back here as quickly as I can. All right, but you better stop by Eli's place. Tell him to pick up a couple of men, just in case. Yeah.
I thought it was the boy for the bags. I have to talk to you. We've been all through this before, Ben. No, we haven't. You know, the uh, Johnson baby is missing. Yes, I heard. Mark took the child. What? He has the little baby at the house now. He thinks it's his son. Look, this is some kind of trick to get me back. Well, it won't work. I just got back from your house, Ruth. We tried to get Mark to open the door. He shot at us. He's a very sick man. I don't believe it. You know why he's doing this. So I'll, I'll feel sorry for him and I'll, I'll go back to him. Well, I won't. I won't forgive him for killing my child. Your child. Ruth, do you realize that from the moment it happened, it's been your child? Was it Mark's child, too? Or have you forgotten? He didn't carry that child inside him. No, not inside him. But in his heart, his mind, his dreams, it's his son. Don't you realize what it meant to Mark to have a son? That he should have been there. How could he know? Answer me. In God's name, how could he possibly know? How? Mark blamed himself for everything that happened. Consciously or not, I don't know. But when you accused him, confirmed his guilt, he couldn't live with that. So he shut it out of his mind. As far as he was concerned, it just never happened. Now, unless he gives up the Johnson baby, the sheriff will have to go in and take that child away from him. I came for your bags, Mrs. Sloan. Leave them. Yes, ma'am. Glad you're here, Ben. I was getting worried. Any change? No, not a sound. Sloan, please get my baby. We will, Annie. We will. Now, Ruth, I can't tell you how to handle him. There's no way of knowing how he'll act. Maybe just seeing you and talking with you will be enough. That's far enough! What do you want? I... I just want to talk to you, Mark. We have nothing to talk about. Please, Mark. 
No. You deserted the boy. Now you change your mind and you want him back. Well, you can't have him. He's mine. N no. I don't want to take him from you. I, I just want to talk to you. If I do, will you go away and never come back? If that's what you want, yes. the boy. Uh, my son is fine, thanks to you. Now get on with it. What do you want? I, uh, I just want to say how sorry I am. Everybody's always sorry. The whole world is sorry. What does it mean? It means nothing. You say you're sorry because you've done something you shouldn't have. Sorry's no good. Sorry doesn't mean anything. It's done. done. Happened. Do you want to see my boy? I can forgive you, but you can't. People can't forgive themselves. It's like saying you're sorry. It doesn't mean anything. But you will forgive me. Yes. Can I stay? He is beautiful, isn't he? Can I stay? Yes, but tell them to go away. crying. I told you, everything's going to be all right now. Hey. No, no more tears, all right? All right. 
That's better. Now, Mrs. Sloan, how about some supper? What would you like? Anything more than starved is go get fixing. Uh, uh, we'll need some wood. Oh, there's plenty in the wood box. Too. You know, I think we'll move to Carson City. You always said I could do better over there. What do you think? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, we have a lot of friends here. No, we don't. No, I told you, we don't need anybody else. <laughs> get any sleep with all this racket. You'd be much better off sleeping in the other room. I suppose you're right. I'll take him. Is anything wrong? You seem so nervous. No. I'm fine. You sure nothing's wrong? Yes, I'm fine. I'll carry the baby. You bring his cradle. have long fingers, doesn't he? <laughs> Mark Sloan, Jr., M.D. We'll have the Sloan... Baby. Put down that gun, Mark. You give me back my boy. Mark, we're your friends. You are. You're not my friends. Now give me back my boy. Mark. Our baby's dead.
What's the trouble? Drunken Paiutes. They jumped me last night. Took my horse, took all my gear. <clears throat> Why? Oh, walked me up a fine crop of blisters. Guess maybe I'm lucky they didn't nip my hair along with everything else. Say, uh, that coffee sure does smell good. My name's Griff Bannon. Lloyd Trumbull. Thanks. Oh, that helps. Yeah, that really helps. You from around here, uh, Mr. Trumbull? Not recently. Lived near here 20 years ago. Cattle and Indian country then. No mines, no Virginia City. Mister, after last night, it's still Indian country. Or maybe it's just my luck. I don't know. Things start going wrong. Just no stopping them. That bad? Worse. Say, uh, that horse. I, I, I've seen that brand before. Is, is that Montana, maybe? No. Colorado. Oh, that's good country down that way. I bet you hated to leave it. Wrong again. A month ago, I was riding grub lines down there. No job, no hope of getting one. Well, you sure don't look hungry now. But I was gonna tell you. Brisket of boot one day, the next day, you got it all. Sounds like you struck gold. In a way. Enough so I can spare a couple of dollars to a man who's hitting it rough. As soon as I stole my gear, I'll give you a lift to town. Mighty neighborly of you. Griggs asked me to stay after and help her. You can ask her if you don't believe me. Did I say I didn't believe you? I asked you a question. No. Then what's troubling you? Nothing. Look at me. I told you nothing! Don't use that tone with me. Not ever! I don't want to use this switch on you again, but you're not too big, and I'll do it if you don't behave. <laughs> now, stop that. Stop crying. <laughs> don't think I can't see what's going on, because I can. It's the way it started with your sister, not telling the truth. But, now, you listen to me. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Sneaking around, saying one thing, doing another. That's how it started. I didn't notice till it was too late, but not this time. You're not going the way she did. And no lies. When I ask you a question, you are going to answer me truthfully. You understand me? Yes, Pa. And you go to your room. I'll come and see you later.
ain't gone. Well, maybe he's just playing asleep. He could have gotten up and walked away. No, he wasn't asleep. I was standing right over there at the edge of the water. It's as close as I could get without swimming in it. It's too fast and cold to do that. The bridge is a mile from here, and by the time I got there and back, I just thought it'd be better and smarter to get help. How are we over there? Watching him, you mean? Mm hmm Oh, I don't know. It seemed like forever. That uh, fellow that you saw riding out, what'd he look like? I don't know. I only saw his back. The one here was so still that he scared me. And I saw a beetle walking on his face, and he didn't move. Oh, sleep, uh, hurt, dead. Well, we can't find out now, but there's something mighty strange that went on here. Take a look at this. Somebody needs to cover up the tracks. Didn't do a very good job of it. Yeah, I just noticed that. I think we'd better let the sheriff know about this. Property of Joshua Trumbull, July 12th, 1837. On this day, Marie, wife of Joshua, gave birth to a son, Lloyd Trumbull. Weight, six pounds, ten ounces. That's your father's handwriting, all right. I'd recognize it any place. I hoped you would, sir. You don't have to serve me, son. I'm almost one of your family. Do your mother and father well. I handled your uncle's affairs for years. I know that, sir. <laughs> now, there you go again. Most people call me Judge. It's been years since I've been on the bench, but my friends seem to think the name fits. I can see why, Judge. I took you wing shooting once. Oh, you couldn't have been more than five or six. You didn't enjoy it much, though. Shotgun kicked too hard. Ah, oh, you got your mother's coloring. But you got your father's nose. A strong resemblance. This is my letter to you. It was a, a while catching up to me. Uh, uh, you asked me to get in touch with you regarding the inheritance, but you didn't say exactly how Uncle Gerald died. Oh, I thought I had closed the clipping. Oh, it doesn't matter. I didn't tell the truth anyway. He died of foolishness. He was my friend, but he was a stubborn old. He was stubborn. He wouldn't see a doctor, and it killed him. You said that you wanted uh, proof of identity. Well, you certainly brought enough. You couldn't have been more than three or four when your mother died. I don't suppose you remember. Only that she was pretty. You know, you're going to come into a nice piece of money. Your uncle was uh, kind of a tight-fisted man. I used to tell him that he was a bit of a miser. When? You're wondering, when do I get the money? Yes, I guess it was. <laughs> well, it's nothing to be ashamed of. It's your money, and you've come a long way for it. As executor, I carried out the terms of the will. I sold the cattle, the ranch, chattels at a fair price, put the money in the bank. $42,021. I told you he was a miser. Certain formalities have to be observed. The court will want to examine these items of proof. And then they will release the money to you. Minus my fee, of course. Uh, of course, but how long will it be before I, I actually get the money? Oh, ten days, two weeks. Well, see, I used up most of my money getting here. I gotta find something. You're the only person in town that I know. And... Oh, the court wouldn't approve in advance. Bad practice. Are you a cattleman? I work cattle. Good. The Ponderosa. They're hiring some extra hands for Roundup. The owner, Ben Cartwright, is an old friend of mine. You just give him this. Thank you. 
You know, I could advance you the money myself, but I'm a bit of a miser, too. <laughs> Besides, when a man is young and healthy, he ought to earn his own way. You're right, Judge. Well, it's drink time. So if you step over to the silver dollar across the street with me, it'll be my pleasure. And mine. Thank you. Are you all right? Oh, it's this cold. The cough keeps hanging on. Say, uh, <clears throat> them two in the wagon, the man and the little girl, I swear I've seen them before in, uh, in Colorado. Without my spectacles, I can't tell who they are. You know them. You'll probably see them again. I'll make a point of it. <laughs> Jamie saw the body from over there. That close, there's no mistaking a rock or something for a man. No, sir. He was laying right down there, all sprawled out, with one arm hanging over. He could have been unconscious or hurt. It'd be hard to tell from across the river. Well, then why would that other man ride out like he did, instead of trying to help him? That's one I can't answer. Another one is who tried to brush out these tracks and why. I'll start a search for a body and ask a few questions of the neighbors around. See if anybody else saw anything out of the way. Yeah. If I turn up anything, I'll let you know. Thanks, Clem. You didn't believe a word I said. Clem? Yeah. He's gonna investigate, which means that he believed you. Now, don't worry about it. He's a good law man. Well, I sure know what I saw. A dead man. No, Bob, that goes over in the rear end of that wagon. Something we can do for you? Why, well, I sure hope so. I hear you starting your roundup. Uh, but maybe you could use an extra hand. You don't look much like a working saddle stiff to me. Maybe, but uh, I sure can put out a day's work for a day's pay. Say, you wouldn't happen to be uh, Mr. Cartwright now, would you? <laughs> no, he's inside and busy. Well, I got something. Uh... Yeah, here it is. It's kind of a get to know your card from uh, Judge Garraway to Mr. Cartwright. Well, we should have come up with this in the first place. Saved us both some time. Come on. James L. Cochran. You're on the payroll. Ah, uh, Bill, good to see you again. But this is your seventh round up, isn't it? No, more like the ninth. I'm sure glad to be here. Good to have you, Bill. Great, thank you. Bill Kelly. Same. Dusty? I guess Garraway. Well, Judge Garraway sent you at the right time, Mr. Trumbull. We're hiring men for the roundup. Well, to tell you the almighty truth, I ain't exactly what you might call a top hand. But uh, you got any line riding that needs doing, I'm your man. Fine, you're hired. Well, I sure do thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, I'll just do the job, that's all I ask. Dusty, show me where to bet down. Sure thing. Oh, golly, I'm sorry. That's quite all right, young fella. When I was your age, I'd like to move fast, too. Huh? Here's that supply list you want at house. No, thank you, Jimmy. Would you like me to check it out for you? Yeah, if you like. Okay. Hey, here's that guy I almost bumped into. What do you mean, almost? <laughs> name's, yeah. Name's Trumbull. He's a new hand. Yeah, or he used to be until you almost scared him away. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did it that, didn't I? Hey, I wonder if he's related to old General Trumbull. Could be. I heard in town the other day you had a nephew out here trying to lay claim to the ranch. Really? Yeah. Would you three stop gossiping like a bunch of old women? Or have you forgotten we're shoving up around up first thing in the morning? I'll get your work done. Yes, sir. Oh, careful! 
Careful. Handle gently, or you bruise the skin. Bruise them? Why, we'll break them. Or didn't you know there's eggs? Egg? Who tell you put egg in potato sack? Just a joke, I'll say. Joke? I give you a joke. Then I tell you. We'll watch you, old fellow. Just about ready, Pa. All right. Jamie? Hi, ah, Jamie. Hi. Mr. Trumbull, can I see you for just a moment, please? Something I can do for you, Mr. Cartwright? Well, you know, Dusty has that game leg, and I'm afraid he won't be able to do any riding. So uh, I've asked Jamie to show you the note on defenses. I'll be obliged. I'm afraid it has to be done today, though, because uh, tomorrow this young fellow goes back to school. Oh, yeah. Sounds like I'm using up your day off. Huh? Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> We'll see you at the end of the week. Uh, you get to school bright and early now. Sure will. Take care of things, Aunt Jane. That sure runs one fine spread here. Yeah. Ponderosa's about the best rancher is, I guess. Well, we still got a few miles to go before we hit the fence she'll be riding. Come on. Any neighbors around here? I haven't seen any houses. Oh, yeah, there's a couple. One's about a quarter of a mile over there. Well, who might they be, just in case I run into them? The Thatchers. Well, you probably know them pretty well. I mean, people uh, being friendly like they are here about? Yeah, pretty well, I guess. We'd better be moving faster, Mr. Trumbull. We still got a ways to go. Sure thing. Yes, sir, good neighbors is a wonderful thing. Remember when I was your age or thereabouts, the, uh, Warner family was real close, wonderful people. They had a little daughter, uh, oh, about my age, Mary, her name was. I took a fancy to her, carried her books home from school and like that. Hey, uh, Jimmy, I don't suppose there's uh, maybe a neighbor girl around here that you kind of cotton to? Well, uh, oh, there's Clem. Hey, hey, Clem! Friend of yours, is he? Oh, sure is. Clem Foster, deputy sheriff. Morning, Jamie. Hi, Clem. Uh, Clem, this is Mr. Trumbull. He's line riding for us this week. Morning, deputy. Trumbull, heard you've come to town. Judge Garraway tells me you've come into your uncle's property. Yeah, well, a man's luck changes, you know. Uh, one day it's a biscuit of boot, and next day you got it all. I'm afraid that's the truth. Jamie, you've had a couple of days to think about it. I was wondering if you remembered anything else about that man you saw right away. No, sir, I sure don't. There must have been something special about him. His size, his coloring, the clothes he was wearing. Nope. What about the horse he was riding? It's just an ordinary horse, a bay, I think. Ah, it's no good to us half the cow ponies in the country are bays. Golly, Clem, I sure wish I could help you, but I, I just can't remember another thing, you know? Well, that's all right, Jimmy. But if you do, you'll be sure and get in touch with me right away. Sure will. Glad to have you for a neighbor, Mr. Trumbull. Good luck to you here. Thank you very kindly, Deputy. See you, Clem. So long. He sure is a friendly soul, just like everybody else here about. Yeah, yes. You know something, Jimmy? I think everything's gonna turn out just fine for me around here. Well, that's good. Come on. All right, all line up. All right. 
right, don't push. Now, we're not going to do that. Jamie, get in line, dear. Come along. You come home straight after school, you hear? Come on, I looked all over for you. I can't talk to you. Why not? My father doesn't want me to. Uh, wait a minute. Um, did you see anything strange on the way home? No, nothing. Well, you must have. You were ahead of me. No, I was... Miss Griggs asked me to stay after. But I, I look... That's enough, please. Well, Ned, I wanted to ask you to go to the school picnic with me. You're late, Ned. Jamie. All right, everybody. The capital of New York is Albany. The capital of Massachusetts is Springfield. The capital of Ohio is Springfield. Netta, is that correct? No. What is the capital? Columbus. That's right. Sit down, woman, dear. Class attention. Class. I just don't think there's a word of truth to it. As a matter of fact, I believe Jamie made up the whole thing. Why would he do a thing like that? I don't know. Maybe just to get attention. Jamie wouldn't do that. He's a boy, isn't he? Or do you really think he saw a dead man? I wouldn't know. Say, why don't we go there? Might be kind of scary fun to see where a dead man was. I can't. My father told me to come straight home. You can go home that way. It's closer even. Come on. No. What's the matter? Nothing. Are you afraid to go there? Of course not. I just have to get home. Well, all right then. But I still think it's a scrumptious idea. See you tomorrow. Goodbye, Wilma. Come on, girl. Now, uh, can't you tell me now what happened back there? Was it some boy who... Huh? Papa, no. All right, all right. 
Uh, go on in the house now. Wash your face. Lie down and rest. I have to go someplace. I won't wait too long. Just you wait in the house. Continue, Jamie. Miss Griggs, I've already Continue, been... Continue, Jamie. Why, it's Mr. Thatcher. How nice to see you. Miss Griggs, could I... <clears throat> could I talk to you for a few minutes? Of course. I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask. Yes, Mr. Thatcher. Does my Netta ever have to do that? No, not that I remember. Netta's well-behaved, a fine student. But you should know that. You see her report cards. Yes. They seem all right. All right? It's better than that, Mr. Thatcher. Netta's one of the best students I have. Did you keep her after school Friday? No, I didn't. Jamie. Yes, ma'am. Do you think you could remember what you've just been writing? Yes, ma'am. Very well. That'll be over today. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Hi, Mr. Thatcher. Now, Mr. Thatcher? Friday. She said you asked her to stay after school and help you. I see. Did you? No, I didn't. Thank you. Just a moment, please. She's a good girl, Mr. Thatcher. She's a liar. You're going to punish her. I am. I won't have a liar in my house. She's been up to something. Hiding in her room the last few days. She starts to cry if I even look at her. Why? That's what I'd be wondering. Well, I'll find out. I'll get it out of her somehow. I've been through this with her sister. First one lie, and then another, and another, until she, she couldn't tell the truth if she tried. You punished her, too. Not half enough. She ran off and got married. She... Did I tell you that? No, Mr. Thatcher. But there are no secrets in a schoolhouse. Children do talk about what they hear at home. Well, not if they're mine. You love your daughter very much. You must. Or you wouldn't be so concerned. But you're terribly strict with her. I'm a widower. It's not easy for a man to raise a girl. But she's not going to run wild the way her sister did. I've never had a child of my own. But I've known a great many. Ned is afraid of you, Mr. Thatcher. She's in trouble and she needs help, but she's afraid of you. That's why she hides in her room and cries. She has nothing to be afraid of. Then you'll have to prove that to her, won't you, Mr. Thatcher? I suggest you start right now. You don't care what you say, do you? I care. That's why I said it. Jimmy. 
Well, where'd you find him? Back over there, buried under some rocks and brush. He was murdered, no doubt. I don't know who he is. No papers, no identification. Pockets turned inside out and clean. There is something we do know. What's that? We know you saw the man who killed him. Yeah, I guess that's right. You've got to find that man, Jamie. Arrest him and try him for murder. And you've got to help me do it. But how, Clem? I've already told you everything I know. Well, it's not enough. A man with no description riding a bay horse. I couldn't arrest anybody on that, let alone get a conviction. Well, what do you need? I need a positive identification. Well, how can I give you a positive? Maybe there's something you've overlooked. Just one thing that would lead us right to the man we're after. Think, Jamie. Think hard. I'll try, Clem. Do that. Otherwise, we're going to have a killer loose here in the territory. I just saw him there. Now, please, Ned, it's very important. Honest. What do you want? Miss Griggs didn't keep you after on Friday. She did, too. She said she didn't. So you left the schoolyard ahead of me, right? Now, where the road runs along the creek, you must have seen... No, I didn't see anything. Ned, I'm your friend. You don't have to lie to me. I did see. Jamie, I've been so scared. I haven't been able to eat or sleep or think or... I know. Just, just take it easy. Have you told anybody? I can't. I really can't. Even you. I don't know how hard it is to talk about it. Well, what did you see? All right. You saw two men, right? Now, one was laying over the rock. Now, the other one, did you see his face? I'll never forget it. Never. All right, you've got to tell Clem what he looks like. No, I can't tell anybody. I'm in enough trouble with my father already. Netta, that man you saw is a murderer. You don't know that. We don't even know if the body was dead. Yes, we do. Clem found it. That's why you've got to tell him what that man looks like. But he's probably miles away from here by now. Clem could never catch him. He might if he just knows what he looks like. All he needs is a good description. If I do, and my father learns I lied to him, he'll... Nettie, you have to. We can't let him get away. He's a killer and he's on the loose. We've got to help Clem find him. All right. I'll tell Clem. Fine. Come on. Boy, I'm sure glad you decided to talk to Clem. <laughs> it's only Mr. Trumbull. Hi, Mr. Trumbull. Jamie, that's him. That's the man.
We can't risk it. It'll be dark in about an hour, so we've got to stay right here until then. Can't, my father. Well, then I'll go home with you. I'll tell him what happened. He'll understand. No, he won't. I know him. He won't believe us. Well, then we'll go to the Ponderosa. Hopsy and Dusty will believe us, and Dusty can get Clem to rest, Mr. Trumbull. Your father will have to believe you then. Mr. Thatcher, you mean Netta wasn't home at all when you got there? No, she wasn't. You sure she said she was coming straight home when you left her? That's what she said, all right, because you told her to go straight there after school. Sure is funny, isn't it? You didn't see anybody else on the way? Any, any boys, maybe? Gosh, no. Of course, some of them are always trying to hang around us. Which ones? What are their names? Oh, there's uh, Melvin Broderick and... Bill Roscoe, and Jamie Hunter. But Which one of those is Netta most interested in? Oh, golly. I don't know. Jamie Hunter, maybe. That's the boy who lives with the Cartwrights, huh? Uh-huh. Sure is funny, isn't it, Mr. Thatcher? Netta not being home like that. You'd think she'd at least have told me where she was going. They are so easy and far. So far, y'all are the whole
nobody will hurt you now. Mr. Turnbull is a very bad man. You all right, young fella? Yes, sir, thank you. It's all right now. It's all right. Hey, that buggy looks real good. Huh? Thank you. Uh, I guess I better be starting now. What's your rush? Got a whole hour yet. Won't take you more than 20 minutes to get there. Oh, I know. I. You never know. Something might happen. <laughs> like what? Oh. Something, I, I don't know. <laughs> I guess. We'll have a nice time. We will, thank you. Uh, Jamie. Yes, sir? Don't you want the picnic basket? Y yes, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Have a nice picnic. We will, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. It took me a while to remember. I enjoyed picnics. 